You might see this image and wonder what's going on. This is the inside of my shower screen. You might wonder, why is there aluminum foil? Why are you restricting the flow? Well, found out water input is far more important than we thought, and maybe we haven't been doing a great job at it because our shower screens are too wide. But I didn't happen upon that conclusion by chance. It came after many iterative steps. So I wanna talk about it here and hopefully this will help move the conversation forward about how we can improve uh, shower screens and water input in general for espresso. Previously, I found that the Kim Express outperformed the decent espresso machine. And that was because the uh, Kim Express has some steam pre-infusion going on right at the beginning of the shot. So uh, I, the decent espresso machine did not have that. And so I, I tried to emulate steam pre-infusion with the decent espresso machine. And I had some success, except when it came to staccato shots. A staccato shot is a layered shot of, of sifted particles with fines on the bottom, and then uh, the rest of the particles on top for the simplest case. And what this does is it, it really makes an even flow through the puck. So if there are problems in terms of water input or the shower screen or anything else, it becomes more prevalent. Um, so in this case, when I made this profile for regular shots and tried to apply it for to staccato shots, I kept getting a persistent channel to the left side. And this was in every single shot. And I didn't understand what was going on. And, and uh, I tried rotating the basket. I tried modifying my puck prep. I tried modifying the profile. And I, I did figure out what was going on. So I needed to, to dive deeper into the machine. So I did that by using a water test. I um, put on a, a constant flow profile and measured how much water was coming out. Um, and so I found there was some unevenness in the water distribution coming out from the shower screen. So I went one level up to the water, the, the diffuser, or I call it here the first dispenser, but it's, it's uh, commonly referred to as the uh, diffuser. Um, and the, the point of it is uh, water comes in and it diffuses the water out, tries to spread it out. So again, I found a similar problem that the water was coming out in an uneven fashion. And I want to understand, is it the water diffuser or is it one level above that? So I looked one level above that. So this is the water dispenser. And the water dispenser um, has uh, a couple of holes um, and they, water was coming out of that unevenly. And I didn't understand why. I took some measurements. The measurements confirmed there was an unevenness in the water that was coming out. Um, and uh, that was frustrating because that's the, if this water can't come out of this piece evenly, it definitely can't come out of the next piece evenly. So I looked at the part and I was amazed at what I found. Uh, that it was not a normal um, water dispenser. Water came in from the left side and then went around the circle. And then uh, when it reached a certain level, it pushed into all these uh, outlets. However, when you're working with really hot water, steam will go up through there. Steam doesn't, you know, stay down. It just starts going. And you end up with water coming out of the left side a little bit sooner than the right side. Um, and this is even true when I dropped the temperature down to 90 degrees. I did some, some work to, to look at that. That water comes out just a little bit faster at the beginning of the shot, which is important because if water comes out first on one side, it starts channeling. And channeling, you don't recover from unless you are able to make water come out of the other side a little bit faster. And, and this machine doesn't have a control for that. In fact, no machine has the ability to adjust um, water uh, distribution spatially. And the only thing you can do is you can slow down flow or on a lever machine, you can pull up the lever, pull down the lever, uh, but not spatially, there's nothing spatially. Um, I went further and I, I, I wanted to make sure that this was true. So I did this little milk test. I did a bunch of tests, but this is the one I wanna show which is a milk test where you, you, put in, you put in milk so you can clearly see it, or it's diluted milk with water. Um, and then you can see the water go around 
and it starts going into the, to the, the outlets and it goes through the outlets on the left first. Um, so a slight difference in how the water goes through any outlet, the water could go out of another outlet first. And what it means is that for low flow profiles, the water comes out uneven. And I don't know what the lowest profile is, but I, I want profiles to go under one milliliter per second. And this poses a potential problem. So I wanted to try to fix it. And I started looking at top paper filters. Um, and these, this is a, a bunch of the designs I went through experimenting to try to, to optimize uh, water uh, distribution. But in essence, what I previously learned from a top paper filter on a lever machine is that it really made side channeling worse. It pulled water from the center and pushed it out to the sides. Um, and it didn't, pull water in as much. Now, if the filter paper filter was further down in the puck, like halfway or at the bottom, it, you could get it the right cut and it would pull water into the center. Uh, the challenge with that is that if, if you cut a filter a little too large in the middle of the puck, for example, uh, it would cause more side channeling. If you didn't pull it enough to the sides, it wouldn't pull the water in enough. So you had to get just the right cut. Um, so I was wondering, if all the water is coming in on, on more on the left side, could I, could I make a cut of paper filter to pull the water to the center without worsening any um, side channeling? So I started with this, look, kind of looks like a home plate design. Um, and it worked pretty well. So then I said, well, what if I just do this all over the place? Because to align that um, paper filter when putting the basket in is challenging. Um, so if I do a star format, um, I might get better results. And out of all the formats I previously showed, uh, this turned out to be the best. Um, this was the third or fourth iteration, and I did the other iterations to try to better understand how uh, water was uh, coming through. So if these, uh, if these points are on, the, on this uh, star or triangle, or yeah, the star or snowflake or however you want to call it, are too uh, narrow, it doesn't pull enough water. If they're too wide, it, it aggravates the, the problem. So they have to be a decent size, and this is a roughly the op optimal size. Um, so I did a lot of variants, and I looked at ex extraction yield, um, and I was with this paper star, I was able, this is on, on average across a bunch of roast, but I, I had to take a more uh, statistical approach, um, is this paper star really uh, did better than everything else, to the point that I could drop my brew ratio down um, I've previously been at a, a 1.3 to 1 ratio output to input, and then I dropped down closer to a 1, one to 1 ratio, um, while still getting uh, close to 20, 20 to 22% extraction yield. Um, so I, I can look at this at, at a more global level of uh, looking at where paper filters are compared to my previous shots. So the, the previous shots are the triangles, and then my the circles are my uh, with the paper star. And then on this chart, I have other people's data because I, I've amassed uh, data that other people have collected. And so I threw it on this chart just as a reference to, to where other people land. Um, so I, I kept digging. Um, and what I found is that side channeling uh, in part is caused by water being pushed to the sides when it exits. And some of that is from like design for like lever machines or E61 group heads, the water is pushed to the sides. So when it comes out, it comes out on the sides first in the center. Uh, what also happens is heat comes through. And uh, I hadn't really considered that heat was flowing through the puck, uh, not just water, and it didn't happen at the same time as water necessarily. So when you heat the sides of the basket, uh, heat will travel through the size of the basket before uh, the coffee because the basket conducts heat better than coffee does. And that has this effect on side channeling because the coffee on the sides of the basket are at a higher temperature, which means they will extract faster than the coffee in the middle. So even if the water was coming down from the top of the shower screen uh, in uh, perfectly even uh, across the whole puck spatially, uh, heat is not absorbed that way. Um, so I, I 
took a thermal camera and just sat a puck in there and watched as the sides heated up much faster and it took a while for the center to really heat up. Um, so this is telling me that, that really something had to change, something else had to change. You know, and I, I've been looking at my, my lever machine and on my lever machine, you know, there's this, this uh, the, the steam comes out first very quickly and then water comes out. And um, in this picture, I also have the water coming straight out. And that's not really true. The water shoots out um, the, towards the sides more than the center. So I started to reconsider, what if I modify the shower screen? What if I don't use a paper filter at all? Because the paper filter is trying to solve a problem that exists in the shower screen. And I had some tinfoil. Um, I had not very strong tinfoil. So I went through some iterations and, and eventually I ended up with heavy duty tinfoil, which is much more adapt to this um, cause of prototyping. But this tinfoil, it was, it, was um, it was hard to cut. Uh, in fact, I didn't cut it. I use a, a, a sewing needle to, uh, or a sewing pin to poke holes and then uh, gently um, tear the perforated uh, aluminum foil. And it's easy to have a tear. And if there's a tear, the water pressure is such that it just blows it out. So I started with uh, aluminum foil on top of pucks. So I put this in on the puck and then I'd use the tamper to, to make sure it's, it's tamp and then I put it in. Um, I also tried some funky designs. So I said, what if I try a uh, paper star? Uh, to, you know, what, what the paper star was doing. So I, I made a little star pattern. And the problem here is on the, on the points, it would rip um, because the water was coming through. Uh, so while having a star would be interesting, having a circle is much more uh, sturdy. So I kept the circular design. I, I modified the, um, the width of it to, to better understand what's, what's optimal. And my extractions went up um, without using a um, paper filter on top uh, with the star design. Uh, additionally, I had previously made a divot into the puck, so I, I it was like a crater, um, when all, in all my puck prep to try to avoid this uh, donut that ca that's caused by side channeling, um, and I I stopped doing that once I went to the this modification for the shower screen. Um, I was previously doing it for the even the um, paper star because it, it still needed help. Um, but that, that process made the sides of the coffee on the basket denser than in the center. And so by putting this in, not only did I remove the paper filter step, I also simplified my uh, puck preparation to a, a flat distribution, which is a lot easier to do uh, and e easier to do consistently than a divot. So I started working on how do I put this right into the machine? Putting it on the puck is really challenging. Um, it's, it's prone to ripping, especially when, with the original tinfoil I was using. Um, so I started putting it inside the screen on the, I started with the decent, I started messing around with uh, where to put it, um, how wide it should be. Um, with, it, with the original tinfoil, it would, we would go probably about 40 or 50 shots before holes started appearing, uh, especially near the um, water exit. Um, so when you, uh, at the end of the shot, when it, it back flushes, it back flushes into a certain spout and that's usually where it would rip. So, um, when I went to heavy duty, uh, tinfoil, I, I didn't have that problem anymore. I also tried doing, um, an off-centered, uh, aluminum foil. Uh, so this, this could, I, I, on the, the left side of this would be by the left side of the machine, which is where I typically have the uh, water channeling problem. Uh, and so I uh, shift the whole water to be more distributed in the center. Um, and the, the big challenge with this modification is that uh, when I've been doing um, some of my uh, more recent profiles, I've been, uh, they require that I, I use a, I, 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 do, I have no, almost no headspace. And as a result, when I put the basket in, it'll rotate the shower screen just a little bit. And so over time, it, it becomes something I have to reset. 
So I've gone back to a, a center um, aluminum foil. Um, so let's look at some comparisons. So I have this, this baseline. Um, I, have, I have paper um, uh, in the, red, the black triangles, uh, the paper uh, on top. And then I have this aluminum foil, foil um, shower screen. So I'm, I'm still in the same range of my control chart uh, with this aluminum foil. Um, some of the uh, paper uh, filters that were experimental are a little bit lower in here, but most of them fall on this particular range. So I also looked at taste and I was getting more even extractions and, and that led loosely to an improvement in, in, in taste. So taste is on the, the left based on a, a, a taste panel I have that you can check out one of my links to where I describe it. Um, and it's just a way for me to, to have something to, to talk about taste. Um, now that may not work for everybody, but uh, if you have a more extracted coffee, more evenly extracted coffee in the same volume, uh, in, in theory, the taste should be better. Um, and there's generally loose correlation between taste and extraction yield. Uh, so I just wanted to present this as a general statistic of, of how I got here and, and what, I, what I ultimately aim for, which is that um, shower screens are designed to go all the way to the edge. And I don't think they should be. I think they, they should be restrictive because when the water comes out, the water will push out to the edge, especially if there's less headspace the water will, will take the shortest path, which is across the top of the puck to the size of the puck. And as a result, that's also where the heat goes. Um, so I, I think this is a, a great area that we can investigate as a, as a community. And um, we can improve uh, espresso, especially because the end result of side channeling usually is not seen. You know, I, I see donuts in my shots because I use low profiles or pressure pulsing, or I, I do things to where uh, I can see what's inside that coffee cone, but at what point that you're putting, you know, uh, six, seven or eight, nine bars of pressure on the coffee, it forms a cone. And once the cone forms, you don't know what's going on inside. And on all you can measure is that extraction yield at the end of the day um, to tell you what's going on. Um, so I, I th think what's going on is nothing's extracting in the center. And, um, and that's why I, I'm, I'm going to keep doing this for my for, for my own shots. I've modified all my machines. This has worked on my lever machine, my, my decent espresso machine. Um, and uh, if anybody else has any great suggestions on improving this, let me know. I've, I've reached out to some people about uh, making shower screens like this just by design or, um, you know, the, the fastest way to get to this type of design would be through a puck screen where the puck screen is, is limited to, to only the inside. Um, so I'm excited to see what happens.